Don't go through your finger, Bo. That's a big ass horse needle. What a therapeutic thing to do before going for a run. Stitch your shoes up. Oh yes, look at that. What a neat little job. I want to do my next wound like that. That's a good looking scar. I'm wearing lots of things today that are pretty much on their last legs, including the shorts I'm wearing, which have no gusset. My balls and old job just fall out. <laughs> today I'm running from Mount Borbor to Walhalla and it's an ode to my stuff. And it'll be the last time I think I'll wear this hat. I get sunburnt, <laughs> so it's kind of defeating its purpose. The day my hat died. My magnificent blue Legionnaire's hat has lost the will to live. If I grip this hat too hard, particles start to come loose. It's beyond repair. Parked on my sweaty head for 15 years, I've employed it as the barrier between me and the fiery hot ball in the sky. Practical and a bit feral, even ugly some would say, means this hat and me are a bloody good team. But with a heavy heart, and a head full of memories, I'm taking my beloved hat for one last run. So I'm gonna run about 40 k's and just enjoy the last day I wear this favorite piece of kit. And there we go, let's go find the Alpine walking track. First light on snow gums. What a special flavor of sunshine. Just a magnificent morning out in my most bestest gear. There's magic track. Last of the snow. Just lovely. I'm getting swept up in the romance of being out here. Really good gear allows that, right? Completely present because I have this awesome gear on that allows me to be somewhat impervious to me and open up to what is around me. And here I am at the junction of that little guy. 10 years ago, I was the first person to run the 670 kilometer Australian Alps walking track. The experience was many things, from sublime to horrible. It forever changed the way I see running, my homelands, and the way I experience the world on foot. It brings back such great memories. And yet I know a lot of that trip was all about, God, you know, I was an anxious mess half the time. I've tried not to be that anxious about trips ever since. The morning is magnificent. That's what we're talking about. That's the scene from below. If I was a ship, I'd be sinking. This hat isn't just for running and paddling. It goes with me wherever the sun shines. It's very much a Forrest Gump experience. People think you're a nut. Getting a lot of looks and I think it might be my cool hat. <laughs> People love Leeds. Do you like the hat? It's a cool hat. It's very sun smart, isn't it? It's hard to interact with humans when I'm wearing this hat because they often can't see my eyes or my lips or sometimes even my nose. They're just talking to a, a blue headed dude. Has been with me for Africa, trials, junk paddle, conference I ran. Hell, I even think I wore it in beans. Jeez, all I ate is beans for 40 days. And most recently, the Fink River, I ran a hundred k's of the Fink River in Northern Territory and McMillan's walking track, which isn't far from here. Yeah, what a lineup of experiences that this hat has been with me on. I feel a sense of comfort when I'm in the shade. I feel protected. It's a sense of vulnerability in Australia under this sun with a pockmarked ozone layer and my fair skin. A hat is a real 
thing for me was to stand up. Oh. Oh. Bit caught up in uh, what I was saying there, wasn't I? To nimbly pimbly. The more moving parts a Legionnaire's hat has, the worse it becomes. No Velcro here, no buttons, no toggles around the back, no bits that you tack on and you, you know, you Velcro on, it's all wank. Groves of tea tree, first of the day. The scene of Tom Hanks and Wilson. You could say millions of people around the world have watched that and shed a tear over a man who had a relationship with a volleyball. When I lost my hat in Africa, I was emotional. I had to pull my skirt for the first time in two weeks. My head was rubbing on the sand, tiny stupid little waves. And I've lost my hat. My precious favorite hat, hand stitched for me. So I'm pissed off. And so I put on the spare. I put on Mum's blue Legionnaire's hat that she'd bought me. And I haven't taken it off since. I love the idea that we transport ourselves through life with tools. Everything I'm wearing right now is a tool. The cruelty is that the better the tool, the easier it is to forget about them. Because we're so deeply engaged in whatever the tool has allowed us to do. As I move through life, I'm starting to realise that what I wear and make and fix until it can no longer be fixed are things worth spending time with. My inanimate friends allowing great experiences. Descending down into, really coming down through the levels now, no more snow gums. Beautiful forest. Man, I reek. Whenever I verbalize it like that, it's genuine. Gee, this isn't very snaky, is it? Bloody hell. On the kneecaps. Oh yeah, lather them up. Lather up the knees, man. Paint your arms. I've never put sunscreen there. I don't think I've ever put sunscreen on my chest. Don't know what that is. Holy shit! I thought that one was big and then I looked to my right. My golly! My water tastes like chest sweat and sunscreen combined, given the proximity of my hose and the hole in my shirt. When I retire this hat, it means I'm no longer a young adult in search of my existential self, which means I'm getting older and slower and not as strong and doing less of the very thing that built my identity. It's not just a hat, it's a metaphor. I'm becoming a different kind of man because the hat represents time, which represents mortality. This was standing before white folks came to Australia. Three or four metres wide as it's in its shattered self. It's like a big whale carcass. This is called fingerboard spur and takes us down to essentially the Thompson River, which is way below. Hello, over she goes. Whoa, watch your knackers. The shorts caught, the balls didn't. The wind for Bodie. Just super shaly. No real second chances. Here's the bridge. You little whipper.
Whoa, mama. That's cold. This is it, Hut. This is your last 5K, mate. Make the most of it. Beautiful tramway along the flanks of Walhalla, which is below me to my right. Ten years ago, after 13 days and 11 hours, I smelt Walhalla. The town I'd been thinking about for weeks and months. I'd knocked the bastard off. After the longest run of my life, I had no idea what I'd think in the aftermath, when to stop and what I'd do next. So much forwardness and no plan B. All of a sudden, obsession dissolved at the side of a rotunda. This was very different, of course, a day dedicated to a hat, full of metaphor and a touch of chafe. It was a bloody good day and a reminder that everything dies, and that's okay. Oh yeah, there's the rotunda. I'm gonna give it a bypass and get in the river. Wow. That was an excellent day. What a great way to see the hat out. The shirt's probably done too. It's so threadbare and I don't think it's doing much in the old UV department either. Like a man shouldn't have to put sunscreen on his chest through the hole in his shirt. <laughs> Jesus, look at that building. Look at that thing. Straight out of deliverance. Gee, I think I've done that a bit high. You can barely see it. Hmm. <laughs>